How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and I wanna help you avoid one of the most common mistakes people are making now when sizing solar for their homes. Just like my own scenario at my home, if I size the system today to just meet the energy consumption that I've been using over the past 12 months, it would be about a 10 to 11 kilowatt system and that equal about 33 panels on the south facing side of my home installed on the roof. But the trip up is, in the next 18 to 24 months, our two cars, our daily drivers, will be switching out from normal internal combustion cars to EVs. So I need to account for the charging demands and that increased energy consumption that we're gonna be taking up. So I'll run you through a scenario of how I size my additional need for a Cybertruck and a Tesla Model Y, and it'll be with a spreadsheet that I can share with you guys. And you can also swap that out to other vehicles that you might be looking at. Now I do understand this is a lot of numbers, it's a lot of information to take in. So we're also putting together at Everyday Solar a way to help you, help homeowners work through what they need today, but but also plan for the future so you don't install a system that in two years is gonna be well under what you need and all of a sudden now you have an electricity bill because you're not meeting your demands. If you're interested in that, you'll see a link right below this video in the description. It'll send you over to a website where you'll just fill in a little bit of information and then we'll reach out to you guys for a one-on-one -on -one call to make sure we're designing the system again for today, but also just as importantly for tomorrow. So these systems that are gonna last 20 to 25 years are meeting your energy consumption needs. So let's jump into it and most likely you're gonna be pretty surprised how much this actually increases your need for your system. I have this big boy showing up here in about 12 to 18 months. So I ordered a Cybertruck about three years ago and this is gonna be my work truck and my daily driver. So I need to compensate how much energy to charge this thing on a daily basis in addition, we will most likely switch out our other family car for a Model Y. So if I only size the current needs, I would be way off. So this is something we need to take into account. So what I did is I put together this little spreadsheet and it basically allows you to select your car. So I have a Model Y selected and a Tesla Cybertruck selected. You could select another car if you wanted another Nissan Leaf or something in your fleet. This is something that you can actually adjust to your own needs and you can kind of play around with it. I'll give you a link here at the end so you can download it and, and you can play around with it on your side and get sizing for you. Now, what I did is I have a list of EVs. I also listed out my source. This is just an estimate. This is not exact science. You can change these numbers, but basically what these are is how many kilowatt hours, right? How many kilowatt hours are we gonna consume for every mile driven for these different models of cars. So, so that pulls it over. So you select your car, it pulls over that power consumption per mile, and then you put in how many miles per day you're gonna drive. For the Model Y, we'd be planning to drive about 40 miles and the Cybertruck about 65 miles per day. So that gives us a daily consumption of kilowatt hours of 11 for the Model Y and 26 for the Cybertruck. Then we kind of get into the panels. So you can change these two, but what I'm planning on is if my panels are 385 watt panels, so once you start progressing with your design of your system, you can see if you have 400 watt panels or 350 or 420 or whatever the wattage is of your panels, I'm putting in a system efficiency of 80%. Now this would be all your different losses. Do you have shade on your panels for some of the day? Are they not angled correctly? Are, not, are they not due south on your roof? What about your inverter? How, how efficient is that inverter? There's a little bit of loss at the Tesla charger and so on and so on. So your overall system is gonna have efficiency. I'm just putting 80% there, but again, that's something that you can change. And then sun hours. Now, depending on where you're at in the country, it could be as good as six hours if you're all the way out in Arizona or Southern California in my area. When I look at this map, if I scroll down, I'm kind of right in the middle of this 4.2 to 4.5. So that's why I'm using 4.3 for my home and how many sun hours I'm gonna have. Those sun hours are multiplied by your solar panel 385, 385 watts or 0.38 kilowatts. And then that's gonna be daily what's that producing. 
So I get the number of panels. So this would be the number of panels that I need to add for each of these cars. What I do is I just take those kilowatt hours daily and then I divide by the panel size of 0.385 kilowatts times the efficiency times the sun hours 4.3. And that's gonna give me eight panels. Now this is rounded and it is rounded down. So if that's 8.49, it will round down to eight. So just something to take into consideration. And then the size of the system, I'm actually gonna, let's go ahead and change that to get a few decimal places in there. So a 3.1 or 3.2 kilowatt, that's the size of the system to just charge the Model Y. And then for the Cybertruck, I need about 7.5 kilowatts just for the Cybertruck. So bring those together and we're looking at about 11 kilowatts. Now the question is, do you remember what the size of my system? My original system was only 11 kilowatts. So you now see the massive difference that this can create. If I just went by my consumption needs, I got those two electric cars. Now I'd have an 11 kilowatt system, but that would just be meeting my house needs. And I would need double that to also charge my cars to completely offset my electrical consumption from the grid. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is I am in Illinois where we do have net metering. So I can provide that surplus of power during the day times and get credits from my utility. And then at night when I'm not producing any solar panels and I do not have battery storage at my house, well, I can use those credits to actually charge my truck. So just something to keep in mind because not all states and not all utilities provide that or sometimes they only provide a conversion. So every one unit you put in, maybe you're only getting 0.7 back out. So something to keep in mind. So hopefully that helped you guys out and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Also below the video, you'll see the link if you need some help working through your system design and ensure you're getting that right system for your needs now, but also in the future. And then also we can connect you with a trusted network of nationwide installers. If you just want that spreadsheet to kind of mess around with the EVs, how many miles and fit that to your household, that link is also below the video in the description. Now, if you're trying to understand do solar panels actually increase the value of your home, well, check out this video right here. We'll jump into it and you might be a little surprised on my answers. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.